In this video, we're going to be exploring the process of taking an image sequence and converting it into a .mp4 or a .mov movie file. As you can see here, what I've established is a whole series of independent animation frames. So this was rendered out of Arnold, and it's just a simple little animation of a teapot rotating around the ground. So each, each file here, each PNG file, is its own animation frame back inside of Maya. So I've rendered it, all out, rendered it all out, and now I need to convert this image sequence into a self-contained QuickTime movie that we then can update or excuse me, upload to Facebook or YouTube or Vimeo or anywhere we want, and most specifically for our classes here in Canvas. And the way we're gonna do that is through Adobe Media Encoder. Now it's a big app. I've already gone ahead and launched it. It's part of our default installation of Adobe applications across our entire campus. So everyone's gonna have access to this in either our instructional spaces like T100 or T103, and then of course certainly in T109, also known as the Design Lab. So Adobe Media Encoder is a pretty easy app to use. If you look at the way it's, it's broken, out, broken apart, this is the media browser way over here. Most importantly, we have the queue. This is going to list all of the jobs that we're currently working or currently processing. We also have a preset browser in the lower uh, lower left-hand corner of our screen. These are presets for codecs and video formats. More on that later. And then lastly, down here at the bottom, we have an encoding section, which is going to give us a small preview of the jobs that are currently being processed by the application. Now, Adobe Media Encoder is a one-trick pony. It is it, it exclusively does video compression. It is a purpose-built application for taking image sequences or existing video files and transcoding them or encoding them into a video file. So let's go ahead and get that process started for us. What we want to do, and the easiest way to do this for an image sequence, is to go to the queue. In the upper left-hand upper left-hand corner of the queue, we have this little plus sign. If we just click on it. It's gonna, of course, naturally bring open our OS Finder. So we gotta to go to where we have all of our files stored. Now for me, I have them uh, stored in a very specific location uh, inside of my computer, and I've already gone to the wrong folder. Many apologies. There it is. So what we're going to is the first frame of our image sequence. So you have to know precisely where you saved all of these files. Now when we're importing all of these files, and there's 72 of them, Okay, there's 72 individual pictures that will eventually get transformed into one QuickTime movie that's approximately three seconds long. Now to get it in, all we need to do, and this is the part that everyone messes up on the first time, is that we exclusively need to select just the first file in the long, huge list. Not the entire list. So don't do a shift, a gang select as it's called. Don't do this where you select the first one, then select the last one, and you know, hold down the shift key and you select everything in between. We just want to select the first one and hit open. Like I said, Adobe Media Encoder is a purpose-built application that is designed to do exactly what we're doing now, to take an image sequence and transcode it into a video format. Now, before we just hit the go button, there's a couple things inside, the, inside of this area that we need to take a look at. Specifically, I want you to take a look at the file name itself. It says teapot underscore anim, and then look very carefully. These numbers in here are the range of frames that we're gonna be encoding. So I always like to do a good spot check, a good double check to ensure that I've, I have in, indeed imported into the queue all of the animation frames that I wanna convert over into a QuickTime file. So this looks good for me. The second thing that we need to do is that we need to right click on the actual title name itself. Not all this jazz, this is all the preset codec stuff. I wanna right click on the actual file name. And we're gonna get this contextual menu and choose interpret footage. Now the reason we're doing this is that we need to ensure that the frame rate that Adobe Media Encoder is going to use to compress this video file is the same frame rate that we have over in Maya. In Maya, all of our timelines are gonna be run at 24 frames a second. Now check this out. Adobe Media Encoder just guessed, and it's using a frame rate of 29.97. That's drop frame, broadcast, or NTSC video. We don't want that. We wanna use the exact same frame rate that this animation was created at, so that what we saw in Maya looks identical to what the, file, the final file is gonna look like uh, after we're done compressing. Now I know and I remember that my animation timeline inside of Maya was three seconds long. Once I changed the frame rate from 20, 29.97 to 24, everything's linking up and things are looking good. 
Now the other thing that you may want to think about doing is ignoring the alpha channel. This particular series of images has an embedded transparency channel inside the, inside the files themselves. So I'm going to ignore that transparency channel and we can do this down here at the bottom. Let's hit OK. And now we're ready to start compressing. If we expand our queue, our first job in our queue, we can see the automatic codec that has been applied to our, um, to our image sequence. And this codec is a wonderful codec. The H.264 codec is a distribution level codec. It's the standard for all web formats and all web platforms. So whenever you upload a video to YouTube or Facebook, what you are in fact doing is, or what they're doing on the back end of their servers is transcoding any video file into this codec. So we're gonna start off by compressing our perfect images out of Maya into the distribution codec that YouTube and Facebook natively want to have. So this is a good place to begin. We don't need to experiment around with this. We want to use a pretty high bit rate so it retains all, the uh, retains all the quality. And then lastly, we need to double check where this file is going to be saved, okay? It's just going to guess. Well, it's not guessing. It's trying to put this, uh, this compressed MP4 into the same location as all of the source images, uh, you know, where all those source images came from. So it's inside that renders folder that you just saw a second ago, which is I'm real happy with. So just make sure you know where it's being saved and most specifically what it's gonna be called. I'm just gonna get rid of all the frame ranges here and just call it teapot animation. That looks good to me. I understand and I know where that file is gonna be saved. So let's save that location. And then finally, we're gonna run the queue. And this red play button in the upper right hand corner of Adobe Media Encoder is going to run the queue for us. Now, once I hit start, our preview down here is going to come to life. It's only a couple, uh, only a couple of uh, frames to compress, so it happens pretty fast. If we return to the finder and go to the source folder where I saved all this data, it should be, yep, there it is, way down here at the bottom. And dun da da da. There it is, folks. There's my little animation. So we've gone from all of these individual raw image sequences or individual raw image frames, and we've compiled that image sequence into a final uh, QuickTime movie format uh, using Adobe Media Encoder.